Hello everybody. Um, today I don't know exactly what I'm going to talk about in this exact session, but I'm going to just kind of uh, throw things out there. Um, first, I just want people's attention to be uh, this link um, about the Flint and Washington DC drinking water crisis. Um, it's hosted by Michigan, uh, University of Michigan, and Mark Edwards is talking about um, his version, not the corporate media's version, not uh, the government's version, his version. Um, and it, it's, you should really watch it. I'm going to say this pretty much at the beginning of every video. That way, you know, you can actually watch it. So um, until more people watch it, I'm not going to stop saying go watch this. Um, as always, I'm going to put everything in the links below. Now, uh, next thing I kind of want to talk about is ignorance. Um, and I think a lot of people are guilty about this and they just don't know it. Uh, for example, um, say someone um, says something um, racist or bigoted. And you're like, all right, he said that thing. Nothing he says anymore is, is going to, you know, I'm not going to even listen. Um, you know, the problem with that is maybe that what he or she said was out of context or, or whatever, but the underlying message might have a point. Um, but you won't know until you investigate. You won't know until you, you listen or read about what they are talking about. Maybe they have their own ignorance in some sort, but, you know, uh, they won't know until they know your side of the argument. And you won't know until you know their side of the argument. So uh, one of the things that I like about uh, philosophy, and when you go way back into history of how people in the past thought about things. Um, one of the quotes I like about with Confucius, at least this quote is attributed to him. He says, real knowledge is to know the extent of one's ignorance. So you really won't have knowledge until you realize that what you're doing is, uh, your, the extent of your knowledge is, is, is gained by, you know, what you won't understand or you won't choose to understand um, for example I'm agnostic uh, do you know what agnostic means uh, do you know the difference between atheist and agnostic uh, do I know a lot about different religions uh, have I read the Bhagavad Gita and the Mahabharata yes uh, I've read the Bible I've read um, um, uh, you know the a uh, whole bunch of other things I can't get them in my mind but y you know what I mean I've, I've done my studies I want to see to what extent um, you know if I fit into any religious belief or not um, the thing is I I firmly think that uh, belief is a choice if I could easily you know choose a belief and fit into some societal norm uh, to live an easier life I think I would want that to happen but you know, to believe in something I don't is a lie, and I, uh, you wouldn't want a liar to uh, to be involved in whatever group that you're in. Uh, I just don't see how that makes sense. But uh, anyways, uh, let's kind of get past that because it may it may you may understand where I'm going with this. Maybe not. Um, another thing. Uh, that I want to talk about is the Declaration of Independence. So this and the Constitution and the you know b the Bill of Rights, um, everything kind of. Uh, oh, also read the Articles of Confederation because that's kind of um, what was what was, um, and I'll get to that later. I, I want to uh, just focus on uh, what I want to show you first. Um, so. The Declaration of Independence, uh, and you can read here um, just a little bit of details. Uh, this is just one place, investorplace.com. I don't think this is a great place probably to get information on our history, but uh, who knows? Maybe it's accurate. But uh, go to a more reliable site. The reason I'm showing you this, this is where I got my um, copy of the like a, one of the drafts of the 
uh, Declaration of Independence. Uh, it's a big, big document. Uh, uh, a big image is what I meant. And uh, here's the thing that I kind of want to focus on is, um, I believe it's the third sentence. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted upon men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive in these ends, it is right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute a new government laying its foundations on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Now, um, it states right there, going back to the foundations of the start of what is now the United States of America. Um, so do, is that something that we need to do? Is, do we need to alter or abolish our government? And if we agree upon that as a nation, what kind of government are we going to have in its place? Some are saying uh, that I talked to, um, you know, maybe we go back to the Articles of Confederation. We have small local governments in power, and we have very uh, weak um, central government. Um, the reason why we didn't, uh, that I guess the... Um, the forefathers of our country moved to the U.S. Constitution, Constitution and to give more powers to central government is because they were, we were relatively a small uh, country, you know, 13 states. Uh, there's a lot of countries out there still in power. They could, you know, re, uh, reassess and maybe uh, come back to take over the U.S. for their own gain. Um, so um, that was just one of the reasons to have a more stronger central government but you know that's now is a different time than it was then do we need to uh do we still need a strong central government do we need others uh that don't represent the majority of people or even half the people that are in our country uh do we need them to tell us how to live uh what to pay for or who to fight etc um so take a look at a read give it a thought um what I, I think the focus on it are these things uh, that'll help us um, instead of going out and, you know, making cardboard signs and protesting. That's not going to do anything. Um, and how would, how would things look? If things we want to change, how would we want to change it? How, how would things be better? We're, you know, we want to focus on what the underlying problems are, what the solutions are, and then go about how making that happen. Because we can't do this if you're just too focused on what Donald Trump is saying okay all right <clears throat> moving on <clears throat> um <coughs> and there's many versions of uh the u.s constitution out there and declaration of independence a lot of things um i would like you to check this site out university of harvard kind of get a little bit of story on it because there could be some different drafts and things like that um there's also something here i mean this is a uh, archives.gov where you can find the documentation of the US Constitution um, and and I'll get to more things later um, that I want to talk about um, I guess I'll get to that now now I'll get to that later okay first thing is I want you to watch this um, at this time this was maybe in 1967 I don't really know exactly um, I didn't spend too much time investigating this I just was reminded of this and so I wanted to show it to you because you've probably seen it before but uh, remember put in context he uses you know white people I wouldn't use that term now uh, it's a different fight now um, it's not about white black race whatever gender whatever um, but it's about oppression it's about opposing oppression it's about fighting oppression uh, he he does you know when there's draft dodgers right there were probably a lot um, and most of them probably white people too Instead of running away to Canada or London or Switzerland, like he's saying, he's staying there because he wants to fight for what is right, which is, you know, where he lives, where he was born. Uh, the country is his just as much. He's part of the country. Um, and I can't say it as well as him, but just take a listen. 
held his own against students who had a far better formal education than he. I'm saying you're talking about me about some draft, and all of you white boys are breaking your neck to get to Switzerland and Canada and London. I'm not going to help nobody get something my Negroes don't have. If I'm going to die, I'll die now right here fighting you. If I'm going to die, you my enemy. My name is a white people, not Viet Cong's or Chinese or Japanese. You my opposer when I want freedom. You my opposer when I want justice. You my opposer when I want equality. You won't even stand up for me in America for my religious beliefs, and you want me to go somewhere and fight, but you won't even stand up for me here at home. Now, this is great because it fits into the narrative of what's going on now. We've got all these protesters protesting about this travel ban. You know, we have a whole bunch of issues here at at home. You know, poor people. We've got um, our rights being taken away from, you know, um, and things like that. And uh, our freedoms taken away, right? Justice isn't being done. Um, whole bunch of things and uh we want to fight for you know um people in these seven countries as opposed to fighting for you know people who are really fighting for you know help they want help but no one's listening because uh corporate media doesn't want to listen to the people who have no voice who have no power you know who are oppressed um and I, I kind of want to do that. I want to bring voice to people who have no voice. That's what uh, media was supposed to do. That's not what it's doing. Um, because we have uh, too many people in power, too many uh, corruption. Uh, they all want to make money. They want to live the high life. Um, they want ratings. They want advertisement. They want clicks. Uh, and you know there are many ways to kind of bring a voice out social media is starting to do that but you know they're getting the aggregates of uh the most clicks the most likes whatever that's going to be shown up first uh of course you're not going to see anyone who posts maybe one thing a month um that's important but maybe um you see someone posting something every day they're, they're trying to get a message out but no one's seeing it because no one you know they get like 20 likes or uh, 10 views or whatever a, uh, a day and that's not enough to to bring it out there to the public so um, if I can uh, maybe um, I'll create some sort of uh, algorithm some side, sort of um, aggregate gator whatever aggregate uh, that'll bring these types of things out there so it's p easy for people to see these things um, Reddit can't do that, you know, it's all based on likes, bringing some, some, something someone says up that's important. But what I want to focus on is someone who posts something every day, something who, or once a week, someone who posts it all the time, doesn't have a lot of likes, a lot of views, bring that to the forefront. What is it that they're trying to say that no one's, no one's seeing, right? Um, so that's kind of my thing. That's kind of what I want to do um, because there's a lot of voices out there and just being shouted out from other people just yelling louder um, okay what's next so um, there's a lot of you know people who want to fight for things for and they've been fighting it for a long time and the only way that they can get that out there is of course like I was saying they need um, people to hear them out so I want to hear voices from everywhere i want to hear voices from alaska florida hawaii up in maine up you know las vegas new mexico wherever um i want to hear people's voices not just the ones from big cities new york or uh, la or uh, washington dc um you know uh, that's because that's what gets a good feel of of what the heartbeat of our country is we had uh, about 46% of people who didn't vote in 2016, 46%, that's like half, almost half of the people who didn't want to partake in the election process. And the question is why? Is it because they thought it was futile? They, they're lazy or they couldn't because of voter suppression uh, or um, they 
the, you know, it would, you know, there's probably a lot of reasons, but what are all the reasons? That's uh, 46% is like 130 million adults uh, who didn't decided not to voice uh, their their support for what's going on. So um, let's listen to their reasons, okay? Um, and that's hard to do because you can't just go out and interview 130 million people over 50 countries, 50 states. Okay, um, foreign and domestic type of thing. Um, it's like you know that's an oath that everyone kind of takes in office, and that's for the Constitution. That's in Article One, and that's in Article Six. Uh, Article One, Section. Actually, if you do a search, uh, let's do a search. Uh, <clears throat> so there's Article Six. Uh, and then there's also Article 1, Section 3. And it just talks about the Oath of Affirmation. Go ahead and read up on it. And the Oath of Affirmation is provided by Congress, and you can get that here. Um, text of the Oath of Office for Crimes Court Justices. And, you know, it also talks about the, the Oath of the President and and senators and representatives congress whatever so you can read up on it but you know um so if they're not defending uh the constitution uh not just enemies foreign but enemies domestic or which is could, could be them themselves um they're not doing their job right if they're breaking the constitution they're breaking the laws um how do we get them out of office you know besides the voting process well we should determine a different way you know the only other way is blood on the streets revolution civil war uh we don't want that um so let, let's let's figure out a way um that the people can actually uh, do something about getting people that they just elected out of office for you know instead of waiting two years four years six years you know, depending on which rep representative. Okay, let's figure that out and let's get that going. Um, and then I came across this site. Uh, his name is Greg Wilson. He's from uh, Upper Florida Peninsula. And it's, you see this, you know, flag, you, you might read some of his stuff, You're not gonna agree with it, but read it. Um, I'm, I've been emailing back and forth for, for two days now, and there's a lot of things that I agree with. There's maybe things I don't agree with, but um, we can't. First, let's talk about what we agree with and get that sense down. We know what the problems are in government, and he's part, you know, he's libertarian, he's Baptist, I'm agnostic, I'm, I don't know, I'm independent. Um, I lean uh, pretty liberal, he leans pretty conservative. So. Uh, give him a read. Uh, you could sign up for his newsletter. You might not like the things he says or, or that is written, but uh, you know, you got stop being ignorant. Um, ignorant of your own beliefs, ignorant of others' beliefs, whatever. You, Sorry, that's my kid, my wife. Um, so uh, give him a read. He's got some good points and, um, and have a conversation. I, I believe uh, and I don't believe a lot of things. I think, sorry, I, I like to use the word think rather than believe. I think we can have um, a solution. And we have to do it by talking to each other, listening to each other. We can't do it by just, you know, yelling my points. All right, I got to go help out my wife. Anyways, that's it. And um, I'll try to do more stuff later.